the minutes from the March 10th meeting. cycle with our new trash supplier. Mm -hmm. It took a while to get that synchronized. Has that been resolved? Yep. Okay. They're, they're issuing credits back on the invoices, what, what they're doing for okay. prior months. So. Okay. And then I make a motion to approve the expenses as submitted. Second. Ms. Davis. Yes. Mr. Walker. Yes. Ms. Perkins. Yes. Mr. Walter. Yes. All right. I'm going to, um, we had two individuals want to be on the agenda this evening, and so I'm going to move the visitors up to now. Representative Becky Colanda is here this evening. Uh, let's see, where shall I stand? Well, for those of you who don't know me, I my name is Dorothy Polanda, and I proudly represent Plain City at the Ohio House of Representatives. In fact, I represent all of Union County and most of Marion County, except some northern townships. I have been representing Plain City since 2011, and I run on a two-year cycle. I was redshirted, as I call it, for the first year and a half when I was appointed to replace Dave Burke uh, when he moved to the Senate. So this is actually my third year serving in the House. It's an exciting time uh, in the House for many reasons. The governor just gave us his MBR. MBR stands for Mid-Biennium Review, and it's the governor's way of doing an interim budget uh, between the constitutionally ordered two-year state budget that we passed last June. It's a way of fixing unintended consequences of the budget that was enacted last, last June so that everything in this MBR directly relates somehow uh, to the budget that we passed last June. Under Ohio's Constitution, the House has so many days to review it and to make amendments or to pull certain provisions out for separate legislation. We then pass it on to the Senate, and they have a similar amount of time to make modifications before it then goes finally back to the governor for his signature into law. During this time, most other work in committees and in session is put to a halt while we concentrate on the MBR. It's over a thousand pages, and so our speaker divides it up into 11 separate subcommittees. And each subcommittee is vested with a certain portion of it so that they study it and they report back to the rest of the group what they think of it and what we should do with that, amendment, with that part of the budget. So it's very interesting, very challenging. I serve on four committees. Uh, one is the uh, Agriculture and Natural Resource Committee. That's a very interesting committee. We deal with everything from exotic animals to the shale excavation here in Ohio. I also serve on policy and legislative oversight. And this is the committee that has heard all the election reform bills. The third committee that I serve upon is the Judiciary Committee. And that's because of my 30 years of experience as a lawyer in this community. And I serve as vice chair there. We, th that's the committee that hears a lot of uh, adjustments to the criminal sentences. We've also heard a lot about human trafficking, and we voted on many bills of that nature. Finally, I serve on the Rules and Reference Committee, and that's the Gatekeeper Committee. Uh, all new bills go through our committee, and we decide based upon the nature of the bill which of the 17 standing committees should hear the bill. I'm very proud to be sponsoring several bills myself at this point in time. I am sponsoring an ag omnibus bill on behalf of the Department of Agriculture um, that will address some new areas of uh, animal agriculture, primarily creating a new category of diseases of concern so that animals, uh, farmers who engage in animal husbandry are not automatically reported uh, for some kind of a new disease. It gives the director a lot more 
uh, discretion in terms of dealing with diseases that are relatively new uh, to Ohio at least. Uh, as a personal note, um, I love being a subscriber to the Plain City Advocate. I read it faithfully and I make myself try one recipe out of each and every uh, edition. Some are good <laughs> and some are better. <laughs> So with that, uh, I would open it up to any questions you might have of me uh, or to tell me what, what is of interest and concern to the city this evening. Anything you'd like to say or any questions? I don't want to ask you a question. Is there any chance at all that the cities and towns are going to get more money from the state? Well, there are several provisions with regards to local government funding. And I will tell you, uh, one part of the MBR relates to this severance tax bill. Severance tax is, we've always had a severance tax in Ohio, but the severance tax has been on the vertical wells. We have some here in Plain City. The severance tax that the governor is talking now about now is a severance tax on the new horizontal or fracking wells. And so this part of the MBR will say, We've got to determine what is the fair amount to charge for taking and extracting this, this resource out of our ground. But once we gain the revenue from these developers, where should it go? And I will tell you that there are two fights about that issue. What's a fair tax to charge the developers, but who gets the money? And under the current proposal, the majority of that money goes to the local governments in southeastern Ohio because it is felt that they have the, the most amount of damage and impact to their infrastructure. I will tell you that I'm an advocate for something else, and I believe that all local governments in our state should benefit from this severance tax. All of our communities are in some way, somehow, providing resources for that excavation down in southeastern Ohio. We're either sending our, our children down there to work, some of our companies right here in, our, in this county are providing machines that are being used down there. And, and I believe for that reason that we all should share, all of our local governments should share in some of those resources. The NBR is like the Weather Channel. It is constantly changing. You will read every week about something about the NBR, but don't believe anything until you see what the governor signs because it's changing all the time. Lots of conversations about it, lots of emphasis on how we can help our local governments. And that's where, where I'm coming from. So any, any other questions about that? And there are other aspects of the MBR that may provide additional local government funding. I will tell you that one of the unintended consequences of the governor's budget last year uh, directly impacted our Tolls Technical Center. And Kim Wilson has been a wonderful advocate coming to me saying, Dorothy, what the Senate did in amending what the House did caused us to lose state funding. I invited her down to the State House. We met with the chairman of the Finance Committee in the Senate, who quite frankly admitted he did not understand that different technical schools receive different types of funding from the state. And so we are looking to see an amendment to that funding for our technical school here through this MBR. And Kim has been a wonderful advocate and a wonderful source of information uh, to me. You know, as legislators, we deal with and study a myriad of issues, and we cannot possibly be expert on all of them. From exotic animals, to human trafficking, to criminal sentencing reform, to school funding. And we rely on people in this community to reach out to us and say, Dorothy, I want to talk to you about this issue. I'm very proud to say that almost all of the legislation that I've sponsored has come from constituents calling me saying, I have a problem, please help me with it. Uh, right now, I am sponsoring a piece of legislation, uh, House Bill 480, the Child Restraint Law, at the request of our Union County prosecutor who said there's a real flaw with that with that piece of legislation. And after he explained it to me and after I discussed it with several of the interested uh, parties and groups, uh, they agreed that there is there's a problem with that bill. So it's great to work with our local partners, great to work with our local elected officials and our community members most of all. And I, I would just welcome you to call me and with any, any concern that you have that we could sit down. I'm always here uh, in Union County on Fridays. I'm at the State House on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I'm in Marion on Mondays. My contact information is on my sheet. I've also provided to you another brochure called Constituent Services. And a lot of times, people don't know all the things that we can provide to you in terms of outreach as a state representative. So here are things with um, 
tax on taxes. I know there was, was it what yeah. kind of taxes? H, was it HP9? Centralized collection of taxes. Well, it's not level. centralized collection. There is no centralized collection of taxes in, in House Bill 5. Okay. That was House Bill 601, which was in the previous General Assembly, dealt with centralized collection of, of, of taxes. That is gone. It was replaced with House Bill 5, which has nothing to do with centralized collection of, of, of municipal taxes. It has everything to do with making it uniform uh, so that if you've got a, a, a young fellow who works for a construction company and he builds a house in Powell and he builds a house in Plain City and he builds a house in Marysville, under the current law he's required to file three separate tax returns, three completely different forms. And, and he oftentimes has to hire a CPA because he can't, con he can't navigate those forms. This is unfair. All House Bill 5 does is create uniformity of the uh, tax filings that, that an individual would have to do. It also calls for a five-year study on the NOL to see what the impact of this will be before it's actually uh, put into play. So we recognize that each of the municipalities deal with this uh, local income tax in a very different manner. And we're, we're, we've uh, commissioned a special group to study this uh, on an individual basis. There is no centralized collection of, of city taxes. Now, I would oppose that because my concern would be if we centralize it, will we ever get it back? And, and I, would, I would be concerned about that. Anything else? All right, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. David Kemp is with us this evening as well. He's from Madison County, CIC. He's going to come and share a little bit about what they are doing. Just a, uh, kind of a brief overview of the uh, Madison County Future Incorporated, the CIC. Uh, really, the first page is a few items from the um, It's just an overview of, uh, from the revised code, what the powers of, of uh, CIC are. Um, I can give a brief, brief background. First, my name is David Kell. Uh, when I live, or I live in the city of Springfield, work in, in the city of London at 730 Kenny Boulevard. Uh, I've been with Madison County Future Incorporated since November 18th, I believe, was the day I started. Uh, so, what's that? Approaching five months now. Um, I, I serve as the executive director of the Madison County Future Incorporated. I'm housed within the Chamber of Commerce. I work closely with uh, Bill Blazer, who's the uh, who's the uh, president of the well, the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. We also have Nicole Del Santo in our office. She does everything within that office. She's that she's that person for us. So. Um, just, just give a few brief background of Madison County Future Incorporated. Uh, I'll read this part, this first part here, and then I'll kind of go in depth about what we can do as an organization. Uh, just in, 19, in 2009, Madison County, Deer Creek Township, Jefferson Township, the City of London, the Village of Mount Sterling, Pike Township, and, and the Village of West Jefferson joined forces with Mas Madison County Chamber of Commerce to create a Community Improvement Corporation, a CIC, to serve as the principal regional economic development agency for the county and its communities. Uh, nowadays, it's, it's affectionately known as a LEDO, Local, Element, Local Economic Development Organization, LEDO is the acronym. Um, the current board, is made, uh, current board of directors is made up of members of our community, both from the pro public and private sectors. Uh, the second page I gave to you all are uh, our current board, uh, board of directors. Uh, we are currently re looking to recruit a couple more board members, and we have one in mind that we're working, you know, working to create, uh, recruit for our board. Uh, the CIC is a not-for-profit 501c3 public and private partnership established under the Ohio Revised Code to promote and carry out the economic development efforts of its communities. Its purpose, as written in Articles of Incorporation, are to advance the economic development of Madison County, Ohio, by exercising the following powers. You can read each one of those. I can summarize them very quickly. Uh, as an organization, we're more flexible than a typical than a government organization. A government, uh, a economic development 
department under a uh, local government. We're able to borrow money, we're able to loan money to any, ind any an individual, uh, to a business, but what the qualifier there is we they must all they must approach a private lending institution first to see if they can get a, a loan through that organization. If they cannot, then they can approach us and we can look at uh, potentially you know loaning that individual business money through our, through our resources. Uh, we can purchase, sell, or lease property. Uh, we can serve as a real estate agent for a community with that's looking to sell publicly owned property. An example of this, if you've been re re reading recently, uh, in the city of London, we are serving as their real estate agent for the armory building, and they're also looking at us to serve as a real estate agent for a couple other properties. This allows them to do is bypass the normal process of, of trying to sell property or lease property through posting bid notices and papers. It, it, it cuts down costs and time to, and makes it much more easy to to sell and lease property um, or purchase property through, um, through typical real estate transactions. Uh, we also are able to give grants. Uh, we can be an agent of, the, of a grant application. So for instance, uh, with the uh, county commissioners back, gosh, the first couple weeks I started, they had me go to a, 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 put together a grant application for the capital budget bill. Uh, for those requests back in, in late November. So we were able to put together a grant application that could be considered for that, for that, um, for that fund. We can also, uh, I, as I mentioned, administer grants. Um, once, uh, we can also administer grants if we were to receive those grants if a local government as yourselves or county commissioners or city or uh, village, village of West Jefferson, any community that we are designated as the local Economic Development Organization for um, a couple, of, a few other things that we do as the local economic development organization. Uh, we manage uh, retention and expansion, business retention and expansion programs for different communities. That's this is very important. I, I feel as a as an economic development um, practitioner, uh, it's important to focus on the businesses that are in the community already. What a, a retention and expansion program allows us to do is meet with those businesses in the community, uh, establish those relationships with them uh, so they know that they have a single person, con person of contact they can reach out to with any needs they may have while they're trying to run their business on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we can gather information and, and uh, feedback from them about what their needs are, um, what their opportunities are, what their challenges are, and we can bring resources to them, whether it be within our organization or through the local, regional, or even state resources to help them address those opportunities and challenges. Uh, we also manage business attraction for different communities. Uh, we work, work with, we oftentimes get leads through either the state Jobs Ohio uh, organization through Columbus 2020, the Regional Economic Development Organization, or the RIDO, or we also sometimes get it directly into our office. And what we do then is the first person that we reach out to if it's a specific site they're looking at, we reach out to the local community directly as well as the property owner. If it's a, if they open up a region wide, say the Columbus region, I send emails to Kevin, uh, I send, send emails to uh, the representatives of each community and work with them to bring the best uh, proposal and property for that particular lead. Um, if a lead moves forward, uh, so I would identify, a lead is what I would call a general inquiry, if somebody kind of asks for a different um, properties and maybe consider for a, a business uh, expansion or a business, lo a business locating to, into a community. If it moves toward, towards a project, we start to really talk about um, you know, the possibility of a company locating the community or expanding the, into a community, we also work with those communities to, um, again, put together a, a more uh, in-depth uh, proposal to try to win that um, win that project for that community. Um, let's see. We manage incentives and low, uh, uh, tax abatement programs for different communities. Uh, I currently work with the City of London, Mount Sterling, West Jefferson, um, 
the local townships that they have CRAs or enterprise zones. I work to put together the, uh, you know, for a deal we did in Mount Sterling recently, we worked with the local community to put together language for a, uh, a they have an enterprise zone down in their community for a recent project for a, a tax abatement of a particular term and percentage. So I worked with them to put together those agreements, and then every year we evaluate those agreements through the Turk Tax and Center Review Council to make sure that they are um, in compliance with the and meeting those expectations of those agreements. Um, I also put the information into the systems every year and do the reporting for the different communities. I do have, uh, and this is a conversation I had with Kevin and Mayor Atkins uh, a couple weeks ago about are we able as an organization to put in information for Plain City in Ma both the CRA in, Ma in Madison County but then also Union County? And the answer is yes. I have the passwords that I can put into, uh, you know, I can enter that information in the system and update them every year. And if agreements are met within the, within the community, then we would go through the typical TURP process to evaluate those uh, different agreements. Um, through our office, we also do a lot of marketing. We're picking that up quite a bit. Um, I'll admit that we have not done a lot of marketing outside of the county with the past. Well, I've been here five months, but just looking, reviewing everything, we need to do more marketing outside of the county. Through our Convention and Visitors Bureau, our CIC, and also our chamber, we are looking to do more of outside marketing, uh, focusing at communities around uh, the Madison County, Plain City area, but then also eventually further out uh, statewide, probably region-wide as well. So we're going to be doing that. Um, in the very near future, we actually met with a gentleman this morning that's going to do some graphic design for us, and we're going to put together some good materials, and I'd be more than happy to share that information with you all and I'll actually get your input as well as we develop those. Uh, I think this will, my gut tells me that marketing will fall within the strategic plan that we're looking to develop. Um, we're developing a three-year strategic plan for economic development in Madison County and we will include Plain, Plain City. Um, actually we're going to have Jenny Burrell and, and John, uh, John Rucker uh, participating in the strategic planning process. That's going to be on April 1st, April 3rd, and April 8th. Uh, from 6 to 8.30 each night at the uh, Madison County Chamber office. So we're going to develop a plan that's going to be able, to, that different, uh, we're going to use internally, but then also allow the community, all of our communities to um, kind of, um, once, it's, once it's complete, you know, present that plan to the different communities. It's going to be a public document that is going to be available to anyone who wants to uh, take a look at it. Uh, so we're, we actually have a good group of public and private uh, participants that are going to give input and we want to make sure that we have all communities and uh, different industries at the table so we, can, uh, so we can gather input from everyone so it's all encompassing within the county. Um, let's see. Bottom line is this, I'm working, I would be working for you guys, I do work for you guys um, as an organization. Uh, I will make sure when it comes to attracting business, uh, you know, review what, what you as a community want with, uh, within your, strategic, uh, your comprehensive plan, your strategic plan. You know, I, I know based on feedback you guys received, the community does not want large box retailers. You know, that we won't look to, you know, if that's the community's wish, we won't look to attract those type of businesses. Um, but then we'll also support and, and local downtown businesses and local community businesses. We're not going to, and what I meant by that previous comment, we're not going to deter business, but we're also working for you to, to try to bring the type of business you want within the community. That's what we're doing. So I don't want to make it seem like we would turn away, away business or anything like that. Um, so yeah, we would just work to uh, attract solid uh, businesses and solid jobs to your community, and that's what, that's what we're going to be doing. So. Any questions? Um, I hope I kind of outlined a little bit of everything that we do within our organization. We're growing, um, and we're bringing out a lot more, um, bringing out a lot more objectives and goals within our organization that we'll share with you all. So. Kevin, you said something about administering grants. Yes. 
Do you do that personally? Yeah, I would be doing that, yes, okay. absolutely. Uh, uh, my background, just real quick, I didn't get into that. I was with Green County. Uh, I served as their director of economic development for two years before coming to this position, four years before that. So a total of six years. I Four years before that, I was an economic development specialist within the county. And before that, I worked up in uh, Lorain County serving as an economic development and community, de community development specialist as well. So that's my background. Now, as far as your grants, are those for the government, the, the village, or is that for individuals who want to open businesses? Well, I, I think we would explore. Okay. Um, you know, I know other CICs, CICs in other communities um, are exploring grants for uh, downtown revitalization, whether it be loans or grants for, for facade improvement uh, programs. You know, we can explore if our resources would allow us, and maybe that's something explored in the uh, strategic plan. If it's a thing that the community wants, we can explore using our resources for that. I don't know if that's, you know, we can all explore. I can't say for certain that would be what it would be used for. Okay. I guess one of, I can't speak for council, but it's kind of come up a few times, and I noticed that you did mention Madison County, and then you said, well, include Plain City. Plain City kind of feels like uh, one county thinks we belong to the other county. Half in, referring half to out. Yes. <laughs> I, if, if we do belong, are we going to be a priority? Absolutely. Oh, 110%. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. You know, I've talked to, talked to Kevin and Mayor Atkins. I mean, we... We would be, it doesn't, you guys give us a call, we'll be up here right away. Uh, I want to work with Ms. Brill on doing uh, R&E and the retention and expansion in, in the community here. Again, small business, large business, it doesn't matter. We're going to be working for you all and, and whether you're at the, uh, even though you're at the northern end of the county, uh, we can, it's what, 12 miles or so from London, we can be up here in about 15 minutes or so without speeding. Because it's, so. it's they can attest it's going to be my pet project. I I really want to get this downtown revitalized. We have too many empty storefronts. Mm -hmm. I want to do all I can to get businesses in there. Absolutely. So. Well, and I, I uh, did a lot of work with the Fairborn back in Green County with the Fairborn downtown, uh, what they call Betterment Association. It used to be a business association, but they wanted to make it more community oriented. And then also with the uh, downtown Xenia. Uh, uh, Downtown Senior Business Association, Merchants Association. I did a lot of work with them too. So I'd be more than happy to to get involved even more with with the community up here with regards to downtown and other and other things. So if I I didn't mean to make it sound like it's and we'll okay. I it's just okay. I, I it it's it's something that we want to do is include you and that's why I want to make sure um, somebody within Plain City and luckily we have two people now is involved with the strategic planning process. So. Mm -hmm. We get input from you as a community, and we can make sure that your interests are served within that strategic plan as well. Okay. The, um, John Rucker is with the UPCO, yes. and they have an economic arm of that, and so it's key, I think, especially right now, where they're trying to take a new look at that. Mm -hmm. And we used to have a committee within the village; we don't anymore. Okay. So. It, it needs to be a priority for us. Okay. Any help we can give us. Absolutely. I would love to sit down with, with you as council or anybody else who's involved and, and, and you know get involved and help stand, you know get momentum behind that group again. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Sometimes I, I think I, I try to I, I bring on too much, but I, I care enough and care too much about about this this job and. Uh, the community I serve, so you know, take my word that you know, I'll participate and be a part of whatever I can up in this community. What is the best way to contact you? Email or uh, probably email. Um, I have it on my phone all the time. Cell phone probably second. Um, third would would be office phone. Honestly, I'm, I'm out quite a bit. Um, so that's David, the yes. CBD? Yes. Uh, we are working on standing that up. Nicole Del Santo is working on that. Um, our, our, we're putting together a new website. Um, that's, I don't want to say for definite when that's going to go live, 
gut tells me mid May, late April, a website will be uh, a new our new website will go live. But then also again, we're going to be uh, putting together some new marketing materials, and we're going to be we we want all of our communities to be focused on. So input from from the village here is going to be very crucial. So, um, you know, I can work with Kevin and, and any other person that you guys deem appropriate to put together good information and um, language for Clan City. Uh, and we're going to be putting them in, uh, we're, we're already talking you know, down south, Deer Creek uh, State Park. We want to make sure um, in, in Dirt Dutchman they have information. We're looking at, you know, maybe reaching out to the casino area that people are in the casinos that people are, are there making sure the information is is in that uh, uh, facility so okay we're, we're in this area what else can we do around here we want to make sure that Madison County and Plain City are are on top of people's minds so um, anything else thank you I look forward to working with you all and, and I'm excited and uh, it's, it's just, I think it's an exciting time. There's a lot of opportunity in our community, and, and I look forward to working with you on that. So. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So, we'll go back to reports. Um, we attended the Union County Chamber Board meeting this past week. Um, there's a lot of things going on. In, we talked about grants, and there is money out there. Who is finding it and getting some assistance and knowing what some of those things that we could concentrate on where there would be monies. So, um, tomorrow is the Plain City Business Association, 8 o'clock at the Dare Dutchman, and that's what Jenny Brill is over, um, president of. And just you received an email. Just wanted to make sure you know that Patty Flowers did pay the invoice for the um, bench removal. Okay, Renee, do you have anything? No, I don't. Have anything. Chief? I just have a few things. Um, Officer Drudy last week attended the Ohio State Highway Patrol Academy to become certified and the uh, use of the radar and the LIDAR, it's pretty standard for uh, new officers to go through that training. You wouldn't think you'd get 40 hours in it, but you can, so. Um, Officer Greenbaum attended the uh, Union County um, Sexual Abuse Response Team meeting at the Union County Prosecutor's Office. Um, and then with Chief Kidd being here, the report that I met with uh, him, we, and um, I don't know the name of Gary's company, but Regardless, it's uh, basically we met to discuss after action plans in an emergency to have collaborating efforts between the fire department and the police department, which we deem is going to be uh, important and also encompassing with this plan developing um, other entities such as, of course, the street department, the administrator, the um, Department of Transportation, and other local communities. So, um, I attended the Union County Law Enforcement Memorial um, Planning Committee meeting. And if everyone wants to put that on the calendar for this year, it's going to be May 15th at 7 p.m. at the North Lawn of the Union County Courthouse. Um, this year's um, speaker is Lieutenant from the uh, Ohio State Highway Patrol. And then also if you want to put on your calendars, um, if you remember we talking about last year was the um, um, Walk in Hershey's event. And this year's the second annual one. That's going to be at May 16th. And that's at 6th Street and Court Street. The registration for that starts at 6 and the event starts at 7. And that's an international march to uh, stop violence against women. So we'll have information for that on our Facebook as well as time gets closer to this event. So that's all I have. All right. I uh, just have one thing to touch on. I handed all of you um, some minutes and plans from our clock tower committee meeting we had uh, last Tuesday. We had some 
really good help on this committee and had some great people looking at the clock tower and seeing exactly what it needs and how we're going to accomplish that. Um, and this is a little snapshot of that. Um, it is the committee's recommendation that the clock be taken off of its pedestal and moved somewhere uh, for repair of some of the sill plates where the clock connects to the uh, posts. Um, and then there's some uh, wood work that needs done in, at each clock face. Um, and then some, some roofing repairs that need done below uh, where those pedestals are, and that'll shore up any water infiltration. Um, we would like to get this down uh, pretty quick. We, we anticipate that it'll take a, two to three months to complete the work, um, and we'd like to have it back up um, in, in sometime in October. Certainly, if we want it up there before Christmas under the clock. <laughs> um, as you see at the final page, there is an estimate that we came up with, and that's roughly $15,000. This is a very moving target and greatly depends on how many contractors we get to donate their time and materials. Um, for instance, a crane rental could be upwards of a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per instance so uh, one to take it down one to take it off so that would greatly swing that pendulum uh, if that would be needed to be paid for or if we can get that donated um, I would like to start uh, at the committee would like to start um, asking for donations for the for this project and collect as much as we can toward that $15,000. I would like to uh, ask council to consider that uh, perhaps council can even either give a, a flat amount of money toward that project or perhaps cover whatever don donations uh, do not cover uh, with that. You know, if, they, if it comes in a $10,000 donation and it's $15,000, we would ask for $5,000. And uh, take any questions. Did you make any decisions on a, a conduit for donations? I mean, donations direct to the village, is that tax deductible? I spoke with Paul about that. Um, he is still looking into it, but at his first glance, he... Um, thought we should look at other options. I spoke with UPCO the other night, Thursday night. Um, they had some concerns about using their 501c3 for a separate organization. However, um, there seemed to be some acceptance of it, and they were going to consider it. One of the um, requirements to maintain our 501c status and be able to do the, the real abbreviated filing, I think it's a... 990N is to keep uh, our funding, I think a budget under 50000 I could double check that and there's plenty of room between our budget and what you're saying you need if, if UPCO's uh, board of directors wanted to act as a conduit and be able to offer a tax advantage to people. This is much cheaper. Me too. Why, I mean, why would we not just I agree. It's the clock is I mean, too it's important to this town. Let's just pay for it. Thousand, which I thought it'd be a lot more than fifteen. I'd rather see us do fundraising to fix the bricks on the bicentennial park. I agree. I certainly understand, but I think if we can get some donations to offset that, and especially with with some of the contractors to donate their time. I think really we can help. still ask for donations to, for that, but I still think that we should pay rather than asking our citizens to pay. Actually, you are asking the citizens well, to pay. Well, yeah. <laughs> asking them but for extra. Asking more. I mean, because they're already paying taxes, we up their water. 15000 is not. Or 
charge, you know, we ask them for money for parades. We ask them, we're asking them for money for fireworks. We're, and that clock belongs to the village. It's too important. Let's just get it taken care of and not worry about it. We can certainly move this into the personnel and finances because we are working on the amended budget. Okay. I would expect to have one more personnel and finance meeting before there would be recommendations coming to council. And uh, we could uh, certainly discuss it at the next meeting. Will that work into your time plan? Is that okay for time? Sure. I'll make it work. vacation beginning uh, uh, <laughs> 8 o'clock hopefully and uh, I'll be back next Tuesday morning um, in my absence anything that you guys need please get a hold of Renee and uh, she'll figure it out from there <laughs> John has had some medical concerns the last few days so we're, he'll be back but Renee, right now. <laughs> Young um. girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there goes the village. <laughs> um, okay. Um, planning and zoning. Planning. planning and zoning met last week. Um, the on again, off again, Oak Grove. Um, we went through a extensive list. Um, of requests from Oak Grove and there was a few items that um, they wanted council to look at. One of them was um, the fee discount for water and sanitary sewer taps. Um, we had 10% discount um, which that remained through the life of the project. I think what had been brought up is, is there a different way we want to provide them that um, in the, our previous with the uh, is it Copperfield? Yeah, we gave it, we had them pay it up front for the full project. Um, so they were asking for, you know, did we want to stay with that 10%? Do we want to else. Life of the project, you know, can be oh, 10 years. So we want to pay it all in advance, like that. Uh, <laughs> That'd be nice, <laughs> but I yeah. doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I'd go for that. He's wanting either a more a deeper discount or I'm not I wasn't sure about the ten percent. He is so he has um, he has ten percent, right. um, but the price remains throughout the life of the project. And do we really want that? That's do his we want request. That's, that's his request. request. So I thought we granted that. I thought we did. That, I thought we granted that for the life of the project, the ten percent. That was my that, understanding. That's correct. So what? Yeah. So uh, planning and zoning was wondering if there was uh, an opportunity that we can deepen the discount if he purchased per phase or per life of project. The TIFs, um, if we would consider a TIF, I think we had discussed before that we weren't, because it was residential, we were not interested in the TIF, but I wanted to make sure that was the case. I think that was the correct um, We also talked, and I know this has been brought up during um, council.
council as well that um, a staged minimum building requirement. So before we had we just looked at 1,500 for ranch and 1,800 for two story. So we're looking at having stages, stages. So we go from 15 to 1,700 to 1,800 for ranch, and then 18 to 19 to 21, which is what they did in California Hills. Is they had a stage. Was the developer suggesting this? We're going to suggest that. Okay. Was the developer here? No. The planning is on. I think if we're okay on a minimum, the market will dictate whether they get bigger. Just like the Copperfield, they went in and they started with uh, 2,500 square foot houses and all of a sudden, there's a market and they're building 3,500 square foot houses. So, I think for if, if the village is comfortable with a minimum, I'd let the market float the rest of it. I agree with that. My thinking is when you, when you look at California Hills, when you pull in there, they have the, the lower income houses, I don't want to say that, but smaller houses are where the first phase and then when you go on back, there are the bigger and nicer homes. I think it should just all be Star market driven. Star yeah. around. Yes, there we go. So are you wanting to say with the 15 and 18 that we originally discussed or a different minimum? If you're only going to one stage. I'm okay with those as minimum. I, although I had anticipated that those minimums being slightly higher, but that changed a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. But still, now's our time. But I'm okay. still okay with it. And the reason is is that right now our housing market is not friendly to young families, young new start families. They, they cannot reach the uh, the financial means to grab a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home early. And um, I think we need to have uh, some variation in housing stock. Um, and, and not set the minimum in such a way that we deter um, young families from coming into the community. And maybe this is one of those things where we use it as it's a negotiation tool. Colleen, items um, 14 and 15, mm -hmm. I was I see the comments there, but I'm not sure. So 14, we we talk, we put in. There's no promise to the speed limit. We we don't control that. Okay. And um, on 15, the turn lanes that would be um, the responsibility of the developer. Which is one of the things they changed at the last minute. I think. I think uh, the village had talked about annexation. On and I'm not so sure that that should, I think Paul was checking that one in. Mm -hmm. I, I think, think that's the, still out there. I think it'd be good to get the feedback from Paul to see, you know, you know what the uh, cost versus the benefit is. Because one of the reasons we're told we can't control the speed limit is because we don't control the land. If we annex, we control it. along with the expense of maintaining the roads, but... All the way. Yeah. Um, the other thing that was brought up is um, the owner of Teak Talk came in um, about sandwich signs for the businesses and um, the number of signs with the in front of the business and um, would like us to relook at signs can be or can be in front of a business. So I believe we had said that it had to go to BZA. It has to go to BZA for a variance, but um, she or to DRD that we had discussed creating a committee or how we deal with that. Um that would be outside the scope of the design of the board. They have a very narrow scope of responsibility, uh, and that deals with compliance with uh, federal standards on uh, 
renovation, rehabilitation, things of this sort. I think, Darren, uh, you're saying that we have a separate Yeah. Uh, look at it from, because it's back to sign code issues. And um, there was a sign code committee that brought forward the last recommendations. And so maybe that's the route we need to go again because she has two frontages. And She's limited to one sign, and she feels like she at least needs to. I will say this: the sign, the, the sandwich sign she puts up, they, they're uniform in appearance, and, uh, which I think is a plus. I think that some type of uh, a uniformity, maybe with a village logo throughout the, the uptown area, would also be nice, because I know there's other businesses that want to do that. Are real concerned with people putting up cardboard signs, uh, which we've seen in the past. I think our, our signage codes need to be looked at again because I think they were all done before the bypass, and now that the downtown doesn't have so much traffic, I think they could be a little bit more lenient. Um, I know it's a big concern to a lot of new businesses coming in. Kevin was talking today about somebody that was considering coming in but was concerned about what they could do. So maybe it's time that since the downtown has changed and we're trying to revitalize and, and let it be a little bit more laxed. Well, Darren even suggested maybe having it for a short time, you know, a limited time period where we allow to have more until the businesses grow in town. We get things moving. Quite honestly, I think it does fall under the umbrella of planning and zoning. If you want to set up a committee, fine, but planning and zoning really needs to formulate a recommendation and then make that recommendation to council. Yes. I think, um, and Darren Leva asked Timmy to bring forward other. Mm -hmm. I can't say that those sandwich board signs are, you know, I don't see them as an eyesore. Although I did question the number of the quantity that I've seen out there at times, but. Uh, and I think that was the problem was the quantity. I mean, she does have a wider sidewalk, which she discussed. I mean, in the smaller sidewalks, it does make it. Our last sign committee meeting, we didn't, we wasn't allowed to work on the downtown at all. We didn't have anything to do with the downtown signs. It was just out. I don't know why, but what we mean, it said we were supposed to work on about the uptown area. So we didn't do anything about the uptown area. When was this? So, that's why we needed a new committee. Your turn. There needs to be something done down there. Okay. Your turn. Your turn. I'll take it back to okay. Okay. I think John might be able to find some of the historical documents that could help you. Mike George came up with a really nice concept about. Ten years ago, about Sam was it? He was it. Yeah, he was it. He went back to meeting. Okay, okay. so Mike could be a good piece of it, or a good point of reference as well. active in the PCBA to whether it be my Nicole or myself uh, I usually try to make it this the 26th I won't be able to make it, but Nicole will be there so we're, we're active in that organization as well okay. not here. Not here. Uh, we had our makeup meeting we were supposed to meet I believe it was on March 10th and cancel that duty on this, but we did meet on the 17th. Uh, 
I think we had a very productive meeting. Minutes have been distributed to council members. Uh, I think one more meeting with personnel and finance. I will include the comments on the, the uh, clock tower. I'm hoping that we'll have something ready to present to council uh, after our next uh, personnel finance meeting. Fire. Fire. The fire chief's here. Yeah, <laughs> you report instead of you. <laughs> I get Jim off the hook. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I had asked Kevin to forward out our annual report to everybody. Uh, again, we're we're in great shape. We've we've done some things as far as looking to our future. Our big push for this year is going to be the revision of our our internal documents as far as our standard operating guidelines as well as our personnel manuals. Um, with that, the other focus for the year is going to be on some different trainings. Uh, it has become very apparent to me after a short amount of time that we don't do anything alone. And, and what I mean by that is we respond to just about every emergency that we go to with other organizations within the community. Uh, we spent you know, a couple nights here this past month in Marysville with several large fires. We've had four or five departments down here for the couple fires that we had. You know, it, it, Speaking of which, let's see where they're going before I keep going. I may cut me. I'll answer them. Yeah. Anyhow, it's just, it's Medicron, so I'm, they, I get out of that one. Anyhow, so where we're heading with all of that is we're going to continue to try to work with our, our surrounding partners pretty heavily. Um, you know, as I've told our guys there, you know, we don't work by ourselves, so we might as well play together. To, to get ready for when we have to work together, and I think that's been a, a real big focus as well. Um, the other real big area that we're looking at is the, uh, you know, we're going to start reaching out to our community partners and, and stakeholders within the community because our five-year grant cycle's coming to an end at the end of this year, so you'll see us on the ballot again in November, and we're starting that, that ground floor of, hey, how are we going to approach this? And you know, make sure that we're we're very versed in our justification of why we're we're doing what we're doing, and what type of support we're going to ask from you as our public. So, um, were there any questions or anything that you saw within that annual report? That, you know, I think the the one key factor that I saw that really really sparked a big smile was you know our, our financial picture it is very very solid uh, we have done a wonderful job uh, of maintaining that that physical responsibility that that we hear about so often and, and that's that's key to us you know, and as as we start to experience the growth as it pushes from the east yeah you know, going the right direction there <laughs> I think about it for a second mom was a math teacher I was good with numbers uh, but as we see that push coming towards us, you know, we're going to have to be ready for what the future will hold with us as well. And we want to be, we want to be ready for whatever the community needs us to, to provide. Okay. Did I get it all? See, I did that without taking an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, I figured it was going to be, uh-uh. <laughs> That's not That's not it. Yeah. Okay. Thank well, you. Great report, Jim. <laughs> he didn't even have to pull the strings of the marionette, did he? <laughs> All right. Moving into old business. We have the third reading of Resolution 714, which is the 2014 permanent appropriations. I may have to pass uh, 714. Second. Ms. Davis? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. Second reading of Resolution 814, accept the bid for the water tower repairs. Move to pass second reading of Resolution 814. Second. Ms. Davis? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. The second reading of Ordinance 114, amending codification for posting locations. Motion to approve 114. 
Second. Ms. Davis. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Ms. Perkins. Yes. Mr. Walter. Yes. Madison County, the CIC agreement that's been. To put, we, I'm going to probably put it on hold until we talk to David. Oh, okay. It's been brought, like, I think the last couple of meetings. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, resolution 314, authorizing the village of Plain City to enter into an agreement with Madison County Future Inc. to make it the village's lead economic development organization. I'll make a motion to pass uh, 314. Second. Ms. Davis? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. Okay. Is there anything pending otherwise that we need to do? You know, he answered the question that he would oversee the CRAs in right. Union County, you know, mm -hmm. and that was... And all that, we decided all that's in order. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I have... Uh, I know that was kind of handed out, the trespassing, mm -hmm. but nothing else has came out mm -hmm. since then. So I just put it on the agenda just in case it did come out. So. Well, I thought there was an amended document, but I also thought the chief sent some information in. Yeah, I talked to him last week. He said he was not completely, from my understanding, okay. he had okay. another revision. Yeah, so. okay. I just, just wanted to put it on the agenda just in case it did come out. So. We're at the end of the agenda. We did. I did attend the UPCO meeting um, this past week. Great, Leslie did as well. They did ask about um, the bicentennial committee. They actually had some different um, suggestions okay. for the bicentennial committee Great. and wondered if we were going to start that or who, what we should do. So I've been I gathering businesses and organizations interest addresses to invite them to one big meeting. Okay. And I talked to the Historical Society about having it there. So just need to make that happen. And then, yes, and that would be just an initial meeting to get people to volunteer for a committee that would then begin to look at. So I'm trying to make that happen within the next and they have their, they gave us a couple of flyers the night at the races, Saturday, April 26th. Yep, you get to buy a horse and name that St. Joseph's Activity Center. Yeah, the races. I don't need it. Not because you need it. I don't need it. I'll be there. <laughs> All right, anything else? Oh, the other thing is um, we, the, our company that's doing fireworks for us um, came out to the park and uh, met with Scott Cantrell, I think, um, to do the drawings for the fireworks and so we're okay. going well with that. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, Leslie? Okay. Um, for any of you that don't know, my husband's Alan Perkins. He works for Washington Township. And today he had a conversation with Janelle Thomas, who is Washington Township's Parks Director. And she asked him about the bike trail, and they are looking to add new members to their Heritage Rails to Trails Coalition. Um, and they would like to have a Plan City representative, preferably someone from council, on their board. Um, and they are real, waiting on the stone quarry to stop operations and hopefully extend the that, that's all I know. I, I am just the messenger. Okay. But they, they, yeah, are they, 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 they are waiting to come around. Major investment. I don't come around Stone Quarry and then they come over the, the railroad bridge that way. Mm -hmm. So they've always said that they, you know, it takes some sort of uh, fencing or something to keep 
it's so important. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I just wanted to pass so that along. Interesting. Let you know. Okay. Nixon Janelle. Abbas. Yeah, Janelle Thomas. She's the uh, parks director. Okay. Um, and, well, I say we'll wait and ask Nick the Okay. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and let you have that. That's a copy of the email he sent me today. Yeah, that has all her contact information on it. Thank you. And don't you have something tomorrow? Oh, yes, tomorrow <laughs> the Plain City Fireworks Committee is having a fundraiser at Der Dutchman. Please come out and eat and have some fun. We're going to have a silent auction of all kinds of cool stuff. And we have a 50-50 raffle. You can get your Plain City sweatshirts. Um, Der Dutchman will gener generously donate 15% of your meal ticket to the Fireworks Committee. You can also get takeout and anything you purchase in the bakery in the gift shop. Also go to us, but you have to tell them it's for the fireworks fund. So that starts at six to seven thirty, eight o'clock. So I'll see you all there. <laughs> six in the morning. <laughs> There's one in here. Six p.m. Six p.m. I thought you were getting a full day. <laughs> yeah. I see the Walters men are here. Did you want to address council this evening? Yes. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, I addressed council about that this, you know, the, the leach bed problem I've had, and uh, I wanted to tap in that twenty inch, uh, that six, six inch line that's like twenty five feet from me, and uh, there was some controversy about it being a private line and so forth. And I've talked with Kevin and Paul for the last two weeks, and uh, looking over the ordinance, I don't think that ordinance is really self explanatory. There was a lot of things that I didn't understand. And I talked with another attorney, felt the same way. I just I'll let Kevin kind of address what we're talking about as far as I'd like to be able to tap in that line with council's approval. Plus, um, during that time before I tap in, in case there's any spillage, I want to be able to uh, run a line over and tap into this cl uh, clean out, just in case, just just for uh, you know, for safety purposes, which I might not need it, but uh, hopefully uh, if council approves me tapping in there. I'll tap in as soon as possible. What are you, um, you got an extension, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. What, how long? Yeah, extension from EPA, yeah. For another month? Or? Well, about 60 more days, yeah. Okay. Just, I'm just thinking that because we're short here this evening. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> I was going to address council on another issue, but I'll wait till you have a full council you know, as far as, uh, but on this, on this, all, all I need is just uh, an approval. Did you want to speak to that, Kevin? Or? No, I believe all of you have received a, a memo from Mr. Lafayette. Is that correct? Uh -uh. No. No, that okay. was mine. I, okay. I, you I, and I got it. Okay. Um, Did you forward it to us? I'm sorry. Can we get a copy? Yes, of it? absolutely. Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure if he's done with it. If that's why it hadn't been forwarded, I, I so didn't I either. I thought maybe you knew. So, um, we'll talk to Paul. Make sure that that. That or something similar comes out, but as you said, the ordinance has some things that are mm -hmm. totally clear, so we need to figure that out. Well, on. we came to that conclusion. I think they should revise that ordinance, make it more clear. Mm -hmm. But at, I mean, at this point in time, if council wants to give me approval, or you want to wait till you have, you know, full council. I mean, the sooner the better for me, the sooner the better for you. I need to know what's unclear in the ordinance uh, and uh, what council's I'll decision talk. is. Yeah. I'll have Paul be prepared to speak to it at the next meeting. All right. And okay. we'll try to have an answer for it. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wanted to address council? Mr. Sykes-Ellen? Alrighty. Did, did anybody watch the pictures on YouTube that Ryan put on there about ventilation? Mm -hmm. the best I sent it to you. Very entertaining. <laughs> I'll take it to the link again. Yeah, I will. Thanks. Mm -hmm. A question. Could I run that line over for the time being until we did decide what they we're doing with this tap? That's. Uh, I want to solve that problem first. 
I don't know why you just wouldn't vote on tonight. I don't see a problem. Why I can't tap into that 20 inch line? I mean, that 20, 20 feet from my uh, from my line. Well, they just don't have all the information. No. <laughs> How, how are you handling the overflow now? Well, actually, we haven't had any rain, not much rain, but the spring coming, mm. the rain, it, it kind of filters into my leach bed and we can't handle it, so you know, I get an overflow. And, so, I mean, I, the clean out's not that far. I can just run right over and dump it into the clean out and it'll be fine, you know. I'll so, solve the problem for the time being. Uh, what do you think about it, Kevin? Well, they do have an immediate need to to empty that uh, holding tank quite often. Um, I would like to, you know, work with with Mr. Walter on finding a, a short-term resolution in the meantime of the next two weeks. Um, he and I can figure out what that is, and maybe he has a, a water tap, so we can certainly um, meter uh, what's going out. Possibly bill from that, but I'd rather we work in that and have that um, disposed of properly rather than over on top of the ground and, and get into a lot more trouble. <laughs> um, so I think he does have an immediate need. The health department's aware of that, the EPA is aware of that, and I think in that respect we need to, to work with him. Can we, can we give him a temporary, let him go ahead and do it temporary? And I would if like it to. Don't work out. You don't have to tear it out. I and I apologize. I thought you all were in uh, receipt of, of Mr. Lafayette's letter, and uh, my recommendation was going to be to allow a temporary over-the-ground tap um, with payment of his tap fee until such time that he can get a permanent tap. Uh, with that not being able to be done tonight. Um, I don't know what that would look like. I guess me and Mr. Walter can figure out if it's... Could it could even affect us. If it would run over his land over on us. My concern is, well, hopefully nobody's going to be dumping it over onto the land, but um, if it does overflow and gets into the stream, then... Just give me permission to run the line over to the cleanup. That's all I got to do. I tap in. It's as simple as that. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't see a problem with that. It's a simple fix for the time being, and uh, we'll wait till full council next time when we discuss the tapping of that uh, that little line. But just, we can get that done in the next council meeting. It just so takes a vote from council. You're asking. We're not. We're not. We're not talking about three ground, readings. Right. Pardon me. You're asking for approval for us. And above ground. Yeah, just yeah, just, just in case I have a spillage, so I can take care of it. So it, you know, it's, that's, that's all I'm asking for right now. Are you okay with that on a temporary basis? Is that okay. I'm okay with it. Kevin says okay. Okay with me. Have the bigger discussion at the next meeting. Okay. That's fair. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Council? Thank <laughs> you.